Okay, in last lecture, we have discussed about the physical properties of metals and non-metals. And while discussing that, I have uh, used words like graphite and diamond and I also, also said that these are the forms of the carbon. So, I just want to explain you a little bit more about that. So, just start with the carbon. Now, carbon exists in two forms I can say that one is it is present in the combined state and second is in free state. When we talk about combined state, now what is the meaning of the combined state? Combined state means it is not present in the form of the element, rather it is present in the form of the compound. Now how and where like how it is present? So when we talk about combined state, the first it is everybody know like it is present in the form of the oxides or I can say carbon dioxide. We all are very well aware about the use of the carbon dioxide and the presence of the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Now second is it is present in the form of the carbonates ok. It is present in the form of the carbonates. Now when I say carbonates means in which form it is present? It is present in limestone, marble and also the chalk which I am using even in this carbon is present ok. Now again carbon is also present in the natural uh, form. Now when I say natural form you know even in our, uh, our body even in the plants carbon is present. So carbon is present in the natural form. So when I talk about when I say natural so I can say that it is present in the cotton like anything whatever living thing if we talk about I can say hair, I can say wool, even I can rather I can write wood ok. So carbon when I talk about carbon I am talking discussing about the carbon I say that it is present in the two forms one is combined state and the other is free state. When I am saying that it is present in the combined state that means it is present in the form of the compound and when I will say about the free state that means it is present in the form of the element. In the form of the compounds it is present in the form of a carbon dioxide, carbonates. In carbonates it is present in limestone, marble, chalk. In natural form it is present in the living beings. Say for example cotton, hair, wool, wood. Now when I talk about free state it is present in graphite, it is present in diamond. Now what are these? What is like carbon is I am saying is present in graphite, it is present in diamond. So to explain this I would rather like to give you definition of allotropes. Like what is the meaning of allotropes? When an element shows the property of being like it exi uh, exists in the form of a different forms then it is known as allotropes. Now when we talk about the carbon allotrope it is present majority is this only like graphite and diamond. When we talk about the third one it is Buckminster Fullerens. Now Buckminster Fullerens is a recent one and much of the things are not known about that ok. So now I will be discussing about the graphite and diamond. Now graphite and diamonds are what? These are the allotropes of carbon. What is the meaning of allotropes? If I write allotropes, how I can define it? When an element exists in different forms and this property is known as allotropy ok. Now I, this both are made up of purely uh, I can say it is made up of carbon even Buckminster Fullerens is made up of carbon but still it is having lot of differences. Now what are the differences between the graphite and diamond we will just have a look. 
in short like if we talk about graphite and diamond these are totally opposite okay now graphite now what is graphite you all have seen graphite we all use pencil so that blackish grayish color substance is what nothing but graphite so how it is different from diamond see just the appearance first of all it is black in color or i can say blackish grayish sort of structure when i talk about diamond it is colorless okay now when i talk about graphite again graphite is very soft we all know that when when we sharpen the pencil when we use the pencil or write with the pencil the point often gets broken so it is what it is very soft and when we talk about diamond it is very hard okay how hard it is it is the hardest substance known till now for the human being okay now third point graphite is like it is used like how it is used so it is used as conductors why it is used as conductors obviously because it is a good conductor of electricity and where it is used it is used in making electrodes in dry cell okay and as just now i had discussed it is often used in pencil okay now when we talk about diamond how and where it is used it is used in making jewelry why it is used in making jewelry because it has brilliant uh, shine now to proceed with like why it is having shine because it has a great property of showing refraction and reflection also which we are going to study in next chapter okay so here i'll be discussing about like how and where it is used it is used in making jewelry as i have discussed like it is very hard and that is the reason it is also used as a cutter cutter for what it is used to cut the glass as it is more harder than the glass even you know it is used by the doctors eye surgeons for the operation to remove the cataract from the eye okay how it is used like they have a very sharp knife age uh, at the age they have got a diamond obviously in a particular shape and this pointed part is used to remove the cataract from the eye so it is used in jewelry and also used as a cutter uh, for cutting the glasses to remove the cataract from the eyes okay so these are the difference uh, or we can say different points different characteristics which graphite and diamond exhibit now what is the reason why like these both have graphite you know even if i burn the graphite and the diamond in presence of oxygen what they are going to leave nothing but just the carbon dioxide means nothing else not even a single more substance is left only carbon dioxide is left this again proves that graphite and diamond is totally made by the carbon nothing else is present in that okay then why it is exhibiting so different kind of properties like physical properties are totally different this physical properties are different because a difference in the structure their bonding is different which we are going to study in the higher classes to uh, just have a look over here or like to discuss about this thing i can say that they have same chemical properties why they have same chemical properties because they are the form of the carbon and why they have phys different physical properties because even though they are made up of the carbon but they their structure is different and that is the reason they exhibit different physical properties okay okay now in this chapter we have totally discuss about the physical properties now just i would like to present few examples in front of you so just will uh, you try to guess like which property it is exhibiting now suppose if i take an example like this is the stand and on this stand i have taken a iron rod this is a stand to this stand a iron rod is attached okay now here i have kept one burner it is one burner okay it is burning with a good flame 
and here if I keep a piece of the butter ok. Now, this, this is the piece of the butter. Now, this flame is on and it is made up of iron, this rod is made up of iron. Now, just let me know what will happen ok, like how uh, this reaction will proceed. So, uh, due to this flame this iron rod is getting heated up. So, but I am burning I am giving heat to the iron to this point that means this part this area is getting heated, but what is happening as we have discussed that iron is what it is a good conductor of heat and that is the reason slowly this heat is going to pass here and slowly gradually it is going to pass till here. When heat will be passing gradually in due course of time it is going to reach to this this area and obviously the butter is going to melt and fall down. So, this pro, this experiment exhibit which property it exhibit it shows it proves that all metals are good conductors of heat ok. Now, again I take second example I would like to take now suppose if I, I have taken one battery now this battery is having you all like it is having my uh, plus and minus n. Now, to this if I add one wire and here if I put one bulb ok, here a uh, switch with the help of the crocodile clips if I add one metal rod over here say copper rod ok. Now, what will happen over here and if I switch on like this current is has started passing ok and here I have used what a metal thing ok. So, what is going to happen over here obviously, as metals are good conductors of electricity the current will be passing over here and you will see that bulb get switched on ok. Now, if I replace this metal with the help of a stone if I take a stone over here then what will happen obviously, as the stone is a bad conductor of electricity this will like it would not pass the electricity and so this bulb would not get on it would not be switching on ok. So, again this experiment proves that the uh, metals are good conductors of electricity and non metals are bad conductors of electricity.